the swells are slowing down slightly, so they're going to be easier to catch with your two hands. Um, it's not going to be such this jacking where you're seeing the wave kind of lift up and out. Um, it's going to be a little bit more approachable. They're still going to be very difficult because you add the element of the wind. He got himself in this event by the virtue of Performer of the Year in the Big Wave Awards. First wave, and it's going to be Nathan Florence gliding into this one, but you can see some of those bumps that Dave was talking about from the win. Nathan goes for a completion, and he's going to get the first number for heat number two. Butterflies just vanished. <laughs> they literally just went out through his ears everywhere. He's now good. Watch for him now. That was that first wave. That first wave. I talk about that first wave always, no matter what. And uh, he has found it. Yeah, I mean, that's like the start of a boxing match, right? You don't come out and start swinging haymakers. You come out, you do a couple jabs, and you, you get a feel for what you're dealing with. And he played it really smart, in my opinion. He came out, took a couple jabs, see what the water feels like, how, how significant are the bumps he's going to have to deal with. Now he can use all that information that he just got from that first wave and push it even harder on the second wave. Boy, on that shot right there, you can really see the ribs running up the face of how big those bumps are. That's why they're talking about waves number two and three being a little bit cleaner. Shane Dorian scratching over the ledge and has to just power his way down. And it looks like Shane is going to throw a couple of jabs as well at Jaws to start off his account. Yeah, you know, for him, he's gotten so many waves here. And it's such a familiar thing. That literally is just, just his first sip of coffee in the morning. I care who you are, you give him respect, and that, that's a great place to be in when you're competing out here. So the dangers of getting those second, third waves is uh, running into the foam, you know, and he's centered himself right on that main peak, which can be a bit of a challenge today because of that west angle. You know, you have to pick a special wave over there because sometimes that wave's gonna, looks like it's gonna hold up, and it just comes with that west ball directly at you with all that energy. So he, he knows this, <coughs> he's getting that, again, getting the jitters out. He had to deal with all that foam. It's not gonna be a huge score, but he definitely, his butterflies are gone too. And I don't care, as much as you are experienced out at a surf break, it's always just that little bit. I mean, especially after what he had to deal with yesterday, watching um, all of uh, the action unfold and not ever really getting a, a, an attempt to go out there and, and get a, a feel for it. Um, so he's done well here just by getting, again, getting those jitters out. He's already got a wave. We're already, what, the first five minutes we see surfers already getting waves. So we're gonna see a lot more action today. You have to absorb the initial takeoff and then press. The minute that board crests the bump, you're pressing down to keep the board down on the water. Taking a look here at Chumbo, Lucas Chianka finds left and did his signature flip underneath, and that was an example of it. And also, you see Chianka, so goofy footer, he's gonna try and utilize some lefts. I mean, I think that you're gonna see most of these surfers that are in the water um, all being regular footers. Go over to the lefts and start doing aerials. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Here's the wave right here uh, of Albi again. He's on that bowl, he's sitting inside and to the channel further away from the pack. Again, with all these shots, and I'm gonna keep harping on it all day because we are in Maui, which means it's windy. Um, we've got a surfer going left. Yeah, Chumbo that's on his second left, so it looks like he's sticking to that direction. And so now the judges are gonna owe us two scores for Lucas Chumbo. And you can see the plume coming off the wave. Again, an indication of how windy it is, right? Own stand-up canoe paddling. And we use those bumps to catch and ride our way down the coast. The guys that have experience in downwind paddling or open ocean paddling, can actually use those bumps to get them moving faster and then take that speed to launch themselves into a wave. I mean, Jamie Mitchell's a prime example of that. That's where his translation from, you know, his open ocean paddling has come into big wave paddling and he's one of the best at positioning out here in the lineup. Yeah, when Jamie's you, able to identify those little wind waves or those runs that we call it in paddling and get on that little run, get on that little chunk of water and use it to kind of slingshot his way into big waves. To, to give you a, a, a better context of how good Jamie is at that, there's the race from Molokai to Oahu, right? To win it once is career making. To win it 10 times in a row yeah. means you, you stand alone with people like Kelly Slater, Michael Jordan, the best of the best, legendary uh, generational talents, right? right? Leading with his shoulder or, or his, his leading hand and uh, really trying to pull that board into that turn because they still have to ride the giant boards to catch these waves, right? Lucas is one of those guys too that in a heat is very active. He'll ride a lot of waves. He doesn't sit around and wait. He is on 
everything that moves. Anytime he has an attempt to be able to catch a wave, he's going to try and get it. So, uh, you know, it bodes well for his competition because he gets a lot of scores. Um, you know, in days like today, too, where you feel like uh, there probably isn't going to be a lot of big waves and doing the things that he needs to do. Oh, pulling into the barrel. Can he find an exit? Oh, oh man. That was Nathan Florence. Did a good job of getting into that big barrel, but he just got engulfed with that giant whitewater ball. Those really big boards like that, you have to carry more volume, right? And, and what that means is the board floats higher in the water so it glides better, and that's why they're riding the length of the boards, that's why they're thicker, and you can see how much speed you need to generate to get over the edge of one of these things. Yeah. And that board being a uh, John Pizel shape, it's the, the model's a padlock model from John Pizel, and he's got a, a couple different surfers in this competition on that padlock model. Yeah, it just you can see that that wave filled up with the foam. It wasn't one of the second waves of the set. It was more of a, one of the first waves. So he had to deal with a lot more bump in the face. You know, he did the line. He had the line. You know, that mid face bottom turn to keep himself high up in it and you know perfectly placed into the barrel, but just uh, too much foam in inside and wasn't able to negotiate it. Like it was Lucas Chianka. So Lucas, uh, again, he's going to be on the back end. So he focused on getting two waves on the lefts, which are you know his scores at the moment. But he knows that the rights are really where the bigger numbers are going to come from. So now he's uh, you know he got his two waves. He was able to do it. So he's a very wily competitor. He knows how to make heat. Brett Lickle, Mark Pedersen, an Australian guy, sailed up from Hokipa. Took us two hours to get up here. We had heard about it. Looks like we've got a surfer looking at the left. Nacho, Nacho Gonzalez. This is going to be our first look at Nacho. Chooses to go left. Going to get a score on the board as he's easily going to exit into the channel here and make his paddle back out. Well, I'm sure that's not the barrel he was looking for. <laughs> but uh, a score nonetheless. At this point, like we mentioned, um, you just need to get points on the board to move forward. Why do you think he rode that wave so far in? He's a major charger. He also knows how to compete. So you, you, know, you can see what his strategy was. This was on the other side of the peak for Nacho. You know, being a goofy footer, you're not going to have to to battle for positioning because there is no priority in the uh, big wave tour. Um, you know, there's gentlemen's priority, um, and there is a rule at actual sea level. They're much larger. Yeah, much larger, and even the bumps are much larger as well. Chianka continues his assault in this first heat of the day, finding another left, couple rights. By far the busiest of the competitors. And I'm feeling like Chumbo is playing the game because when you put the jersey on, <laughs> yeah. it is a game. It's the competition game. To ride, and that's what he's in. He sees it in his mind and he wants to ride it. So he's looking for that style of wave. Here's Chumbo, Lucas Chianka on the replay. I love uh, Chumbo because, again, he is going to take a shortboard approach to uh, big wave surfing. I mean, look at what he sees here. He's like, okay, I'm going to go straight up. <laughs> he does it. It's intense, but they also um, are probably not as difficult. Even though you throw the wind factor into the into the uh, fray, it's also both directions. But it is, if you're going to go left, it's going to be a lot easier. So the, the degree of difficulty is less. As we watch Shane Dorian finish off his left-hander. Sit for three hours to get the wave of the day during a free surf, but he also obviously is a, a championship tour competitor over the years, so he knows to how to compete, so he can change it up pretty easily. We've got a lot of action going on right now for the important opportunity. Yeah, and so ultimately, if you think about the judging criteria, is that, you know, intensity and height of wave comes into play, and, you know, the rights are definitely more intense because it has the volume, a lot of the stuff's pushing onto the reef, whereas the lefts are gonna have... From Chumbo, waves from Nathan Florence, and waves from Shane Doran, as well as Nacho Gonzalez, on this exchange. So a lot of waves ridden through this set. A lot of work for the judges, and we could see a mix-up of the standings as we're under the 11-minute mark. So reflecting on what just happened, you had Shiank on another wave, um, which his fourth wave has posted, which again, it went into his top two. And Pete, take a look. It looks like there's only one person in the lineup um, and a set is not that far away. That, that could really open the door to positioning himself for well, it. And, and it's Jojo Roper who is yet to even get away. The types of moves that I like seeing. And Nacho Gonzalez here. Nacho, this section stands up for him. And these lefts, you know, with the wind like that, this is going to be his best way. 
You know, he rode that last one for a really long time. This one, I think, is a bit more steeper on the face, so a little bit more challenging. Had a higher degree of difficulty. So he's going to add to that 3.13. Yeah, a quick note on the left. The, the, the characteristic of the left, while we're looking at a replay of the right, um, the left doesn't have that squared off bottom. It's more of a consistent slope from the bottom of the wave up to the top. And that's what makes it a little bit easier to negotiate because you don't have those hard angles that are, you feel like you're dropping down. The right has that. The right is steeper. There's more of a, a squared off corner at the bottom and that's what enables it to get those big barrels. Have that same intensity, whereas the rights are definitely be pushing on the reef. It's, it's pulling, you look at the channel, look at there's hardly a swell over there. Oh, here Shane we go. Dorian caught up there, skips down oh, the face, and no. skips down without his board tumbling into the abyss. Shane Dorian. That was a nasty wipeout. Again, that wind. As this soon as that one. board went sideways and was open to the wind. Nacho Gonzalez <gasps> and is able to pull that board out, blown off the top of that wave. Still looking for Shane Durham. He just came out and he just got a mountain of white water right on the noggin there. Nathan Florence finds a cover up nice. and goes complete. Nice line through that section for Nathan Florence, our current heat leader. So it's similar to skipping a rock. You know, on the side of the lake, you, you, know, you take a rock and you skip it. You know, it, you're going to skip and you're going to float and you're going to, you know, at that point, there's a lot of things to think about. There's a lot of sights to see. You're losing breaths. Is it possible for the, your air to get knocked yes, out of you? absolutely is. You know, and I think that's why a lot of surfers you see turn to their backs because they can kind of skip a little bit easier rather than having it hit their chest. So you can go on your backside. You're able to kind of uh, skim a little bit easier on your back and not lose that breath and have that breath knocked out of you because it is all about getting that little quick hyperventilation. A couple uh, more looks at Nathan Florence here, Dave. Really nice setup. Very casual style. Kind of struck that pose for a second there. Classic, classic tube riding stance. Showcasing that it's, you look like, ah, oh, this is no big deal. You know? uh, <laughs> the cakewalk. Chianca negotiating a drop, the wind, the chop, and looks for another top turn, which he's going to get, but oh. gets a little sticky there. It has to dive off his board right after ride, right at the end, you know, inside the three minute mark. Here's a replay of Lucas Chianca. I mean, I, of all things, I think that that's one of the things that information that the surfers have. They may not have the scores, you know, so you have to kind of calculate in your head, but you do have a watch and you'll hear that horn. You'll know what, how much time is left. So we're at that back, you know, five minutes of the heat. You got to make it happen at this point. See that wind super affected him when he was yeah. trying to do that maneuver, especially when you go high up in the lift like that. It accelerates the wind. It makes it very difficult to pull the maneuver down. And you can see in, in his mind, he had a line drawn out, but he couldn't get the wind or the board to make that turn because the wind was holding it against him. It looks like we got a wave. Up. Nacho Gonzalez taking a look at that one, decides Down at the it's Albie a no-go. Like and Alby Lair. Alby bowl and finds the little bowl section there. <laughs> that is a huge moment for Alby. Um, he only had the 583, which is actually the best number of the heat, and now has backed it up. Another great ride for him. That's going to solidify. He was on the bubble with that third position. Yep. We've all seen those images of him just packing it way behind. But on this one, classic Alby. Uh, and his boards you get are designed. Um, you know, Short Order has been, been working with Alby and, and getting experimental in, in big wave design. You know, he is riding by far the shortest board here. But see where he's surfing that board? He is surfing it above a front. I mean, there's more yeah. board behind his back <laughs> foot than there is in front of his front foot. And there's nobody else that are doing that. You know, we saw Shane Dorian do it. But look at where his, I mean, there's most of the board, I mean, he's surfing it from the middle, you know. And that's something that the design that he's done to be able to ride that shorter equipment. But it also allows him to go really fast. The scores are in. Nathan Florence is going to move on. Albie Lair is going to move on. Lucas Chianca moving on to the semifinal.